The scripture today speaks about the amazing power of God. Amazing power of God. Rich in content. Wonderful in presentation. Greatly composed of the most important theological factors and facts that we need to learn, recite, remember, and meditate on. The psalmist this morning speaks about, listen, O daughter of Israel, incline your ears, for the king greatly desired your beauty, for he loves you and you worship him. That message, though personalized and perfectionist in St. Mary, it is a message for every soul that the, the church and God has had him or her in his household. What are those wonderful theological facts that everyone need to know about, learn about, recite, meditate. First, rejoice. In a very anxious, devastating, despondent, falling apart world, the word comes to each one of us. Rejoice. It is a good news. When we think of those things, sometimes we tend to live back there. As the story has been spoken about two, so over 2,000 years ago. But the fact is not. That's not a story given into the past. It is the presence of that story in today for every one of us. Yes, rejoice. The first word Archangel Gabriel uttered to Mary. Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with thee. Blessed are you among women. The very, very message to each one of you. Rejoice. The Lord is with you and blessed you among men. How many men in the world don't know, have not received, have not heard, and if they heard, they decline to believe. So be blessed among men. The first one, rejoice. The second, fear not. To those who fear the future, to those who tremble in the presence of what could happen tomorrow, to those who scare to death that the future will bring devastation, The word, do not fear. The angel said it to Mary. When she traveled, when she heard what considered, what kind of greeting it is, he said to her, do not be afraid. For you have found favor with the Lord. Same thing to you today. When the trouble comes, when the trouble hit home, when the fear took your part and your heart apart, hear the very word. Do not be afraid. For you have found favor with the Lord. But why? Why? What specialty are we that we have found? this kind of favor with the Lord because we believe 
in his name. We know his name, Jesus Christ. Who is he? What do we know about Christ and Jesus Christ? What do we ought to know about Christ and Jesus Christ? Well, well, listen to that. The proclamation of who Jesus is. The proclamation of who Jesus is has to be the one that most exalted in the entire in all scripture yes we hear it but we need to recite it we need to know it by heart who Jesus is that's the treasure of today uttered by Saint Gabriel by Archangel Gabriel to Mary he will be great he will be called the son of the most high and the Lord God will give him what the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David is that all no he will reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom has no end that's Jesus we know that Jesus we believe that Jesus that we not only know but we should have an intimate life with him that Jesus that we should proclaim everywhere we go that Jesus what we need to be reminded and mindful of his presence not every day not every hour but every moment in our life that is Jesus that who is gonna really dispel the fear from our life if we know him see my friends why we're praying because Lord Jesus is not as what we need to be filling our life because his presence will dispel fear his presence will get us to feel his word stand still for I am the Lord but wait a minute that's not only the third theological factor that we hear today there's more to it more glorious my wonderful and that's the triune God to those people who do not understand what triune God means what is it the Trinity my friends the Trinity the beauty about Trinity is actually the one thing that we each have to teach and to tell our children about it so they do not get confused are we worshiping one God or three the Trinity of God has to do with the sense and the perfect sense of what we believe and we ought to teach It is the best gift that Jesus and God have sent through the angel. The pure and simple gift. And what is this gift? Listen to the Bible, what it says today. The Holy Spirit will come upon you the Holy Spirit will come upon you the power of the Most High will overshadow you the child to be born is holy 
and he would be called son of God. Within that single sentence, within that single verse, we possess, we have the true fact about what Christianity centered in the focus of the Trinity. All, pres all persons are present in that verse. In God, the Most High. In Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And the overshadowing presence of the Holy Spirit give us the solid, most rooted understanding of Christianity and the three on God that we should teach the little ones and the old ones. So we do not go confused when someone said, do you believe in three gods? No. So to those who do not understand, we teach our kid, you use to speak about God as three persons, powerful and strong. <clears throat> With all this what we know, with this glorious understanding of the true jewel of our faith, where that would leave us? Oh yes, put us in a position to have faith and humility. Faith, simple faith, that's so wonderful that when the angel shared that with St. Mary, he responds with the following. I'm the hand servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. Strong face. It came from her essence of humility. What is humility? Oh, do we make a mistake? Some of us think humility is to walk weak beside the wall on your knees. That's not humility. Humility is to think less of yourself, not thinking little of yourself. In other words, humility is not self-predication. It's not that you put yourself down. You belittle your achievement or your success. You think of yourself less. You think less of yourself. That's humility. Humility is to measure who you are and who I am in the glorious, magnificent God. And that's what Mary feels on that. In her presence of this great news, faith came ready. Humility indeed put her at that moment to feel so small. But before the angel depart, there is one theological fact. And the fact is, there will be nothing impossible to God. God makes the impossible possible. The word impossible is not in the direct, in the, in the dictionary of God. The word impossible for any one of us should never, never enter your mind. Why? As I said, the angel before he left, he wanted to sweep and seal the deal. He wanted to give her a proof that she is not in a state of illusion, imagination, that she's sharing an angel. He wanted to see her and show her that this is a true message from the Lord. Here is your relative, Elizabeth. It's conceived in the six months with a son. Who so called was barren. 
And then the words of the Lord came to her. For nothing is impossible with God. Remember, the Korea and Elizabeth was very wonderful people. Walked in the commandments of God. Feared the, God, feared the Lord. Walked without blame. And they were praying day and night to have a child. They didn't get it. They didn't get it. Until the Lord, in his due time, sent it. Well, Mary, her dad, she's aware what his cousin Elizabeth has been through. Well, is she pregnant in the six months? She got up swiftly and ran. Not only to know and congratulate and to serve, but to live the reality of that wonderful apparition of Angel Mary, of, of the Angel Gabriel and his message. Those are the six theological facts. One, rejoice. Two, fear not. Three, know who Jesus is. Four, our God is true God. Fifth, remember that very important thing. With all these wonderful gifts, we have to have the powerful faith and we have to know what humility is. Finally, there is no impossible because God has made the impossible possible. Glory be to God. We believe in one God, God the Father, the Pontocrator, Creator of heaven and earth, and all things here on sea.